I occasionally receive requests to do videos on how I would approach a particular model that's been uploaded to Thingiverse or similar sites. So I've been thinking of doing a series called How It's Made, or more accurately, How It's Designed, where I take an existing model and show how I would, I would tackle the design in Fusion 360. I would take requests and then pick a design to tackle. If this is something you'd be interested in me doing, uh, then let me know in the comments. I'm putting together a list now, so if if you have a model that you've been wanting to tackle but just didn't know how to begin, uh, then leave the link in the comments and I'll take a look. Depending on the project and of course giving priority to my Patreon supporters, I'll make a decision on which ones to do a video on. So today's video is kind of on the same realm. Uh, in my weekly live class, which I've linked below if you're interested in checking it out, uh, we decided to tackle this spider bull by DSK001 uh, posted to printables. Now, no way am I going to cover this entire design in one YouTube video, but one of the features I thought would be fun to tackle is the spider web that's patterned around the bull. Here's my finished design of the model. The spider body was created in the sculpting workspace and therefore is this complex shape, which means I won't be able to simply use the emboss tool. There are some other challenges we'll face to get this pattern, but I'm gonna address each one and hopefully introduce you to some new tools that you can throw in your design toolbox. Now, I will emphasize that this will be my approach to this design. I don't know what approach the original designer took or even what software they used. All right, let's jump right in. We'll begin by creating a sketch on the front plane. That's our Z X plane there, or that blue red plane. P for project, and I'm going to project that front surface there. Click OK, untoggle bodies, and that'll give me uh, sort of my boundary there to see where I'm designing. And it makes it a lot easier to see your sketch lines when you untoggle body here. All right, I'm gonna begin with a circle. So C for circle, I'm gonna create a circle here and give it a diameter of 60 millimeters. And then I'm gonna take this circle and vertically constrain it to that origin point there. So I'll grab my vertical constraint there, click on the center of the circle and the origin. Now it's locked to the center and I'm just gonna eyeball it into place here. Um, you'll notice throughout this design, I'm not gonna be so strict with constraints. This is more of this sort of organic shape. Um, so I'm going to do things that I wouldn't normally do with uh, ignoring constraints here. Okay, now I'll create two more circles and I'll give one a diameter of 40 millimeters and the other one a diameter of 20. I'm gonna come in with a line right from the, or the center of the circle there. I'm just gonna make a diagonal line here and then I'm gonna take that line and I'm gonna do a circular pattern. So create circular pattern, select my line and then my center points, I'm just gonna select um, the outer circle here and create 12 of those. Okay, and since I have 12, uh, you'll notice that the dimension here, if I, or the angle between each line here is going to be 30 degrees. All right, next I'm gonna come in with my arc tool. So I'm gonna grab a three point arc. Now choose one of these segments here and I'm gonna create an arc between the two points. And here, I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a bulge here. I'm not gonna, again, worry so much about the the uh, diameter there. If it's snapping um, into a certain position, just hold the command or control button and that'll give you free, um, you know, uh, it won't lock it into place, just allow you to kind of set it. Okay, so three arcs and now I'm gonna come in again with a circular pattern and choose these three arcs. And my center point, I'll just select the circle here. Again, create 12 of those. And there we have it, uh, something that's resembling a spider web. Now I'm only gonna keep what I need here, so it's gonna make it a lot easier when I go to select things later, um, if I just delete stuff I don't need. So I'm gonna select this outer um, projected line I had made, click delete. And now I'm gonna delete these three circles as well. All right, and then I just have sort of my web features that I need. Uh, finish sketch. All right, now I have this sketch and I have this body. Here's what I wanna end up with, right, is getting the this web feature on the outer surface here. So to do that, there's probably like a few approaches you're thinking and I kind of went through each one of these. Um, really quick, I'll show you um, some of them that I thought about doing. For example, you may think of, okay, emboss this onto the surface. So create, emboss. Um, the problem with the emboss is it wants to select profiles. So 
um, you can see here I can't select each of these lines. What I want is those lines projected. So I can do, for example, a profile, but then I, I run into another problem where the emboss does not work on complex curves. So if I select faces, it's not going to let me select the face here. So that's out of the question. The other thing I thought was thin extrude. And so thin extrude, um, it can kind of, um, well, it starts to work, but another uh, issue I hit was, so if I do, instead of profile plane, I do object and I select this object and say a negative one millimeter thin extrude here. Um, it just, it wasn't working for me. It kind of thinks about it and it gives me an error that that's not going to work. So I tried a few other things that didn't work. Uh, let's go straight to what did work here. And this is a tool, I don't know if you um, use often or you may not even know exist, uh, uh, but it does come handy. And that's going to be our project to surface tool. Um, so the way that works is first we need to create a new sketch. It cannot be the same sketch as that uh, our current sketch is on that we're trying to project. So I'll create another sketch and I'll choose the front plane again. And let's on toggle bodies here for now. And so we're just seeing, I only need to see this, uh, yeah, the second sketch there. All right, so what we're going to do now, when you go into a sketch, you go down to uh, click create, go down to project include, you'll see an option here, project to surface. So we're gonna choose that. And let's go to curves first. Now uh, I'll click on curves and I'm gonna go to select here, selection filters uncheck select all and I'm just going to do sketch curves that's going to make it easier for me to just drag and select and it'll just select the curves and no other points or anything else there and you'll see you should have 48 all right next I'm going to choose uh, project direction and this is the direction I wanted to project I'm going to want it to project along the front face so I'm just going to choose this uh, y-axis here uh, be careful it's not letting me select it that's because I have to go back and turn um, selection filters back to select all all right now I can click to select it now I'm gonna choose my face that I want that to project to and that's where I'll bring in the body and then I'll click this face here and then there you go you see what it did there I'll click OK and it took this flat surface here this flat sketch and it projected it let me click finish sketch here. It projected it right onto the surface here. So if I untoggle that body, you'll see that this now matches the curve of my body, so which is great. So no matter you know what shape or how complex that curve is, it's going to take that flat sketch that it's in one plane and project it here. So you can see that you know with this sketch, I can select different profiles because these are all on one plane. With this, it's all on separate planes. So great tool to take advantage there when you need it. Um, okay, now what we are going to do is we have this sketch on this surface. And here's the other, um, the other challenge is how do we get the web to happen here? So a couple options you may be thinking here. Uh, one thing that came to mind was uh, using my thin extrude tool um, and selecting um, profiles. Uh, one issue with that is it's, it's kind of tedious. It doesn't let you sometimes select more than one line so if I do like a negative one millimeter extrude I can get it to actually come in and create an extrusion there but then I have to do these individually uh, which is just you know that's going to be quite a bit tedious so let's not do that um, the other option you may be thinking is pipe so let's go down to the pipe tool um, kind of the same issue it doesn't let you select everything it'll let you select maybe you know two or three depending on what you select but you can see here, there's a lot, it's not letting me select. So you'd have to do these in sort of different sections. And here it's even, it's not even letting me create it. So at the end of the day, it's just not gonna work. Uh, let me see distance, negative one, actually. Let's go the other way. Mm. So at the end of the day, this didn't really work for me. Um, however, I do know that the pipe tool works a bit differently in the sculpting workspace as it does in the solid uh, workspace here. So uh, that's what I ended up going with. We're going to jump in the sculpting environment here by clicking on the create form button. And here what we can do is grab our pipe primitive here. And so I'll choose pipe. Let's go to a front view here and then I'll drag select everything. And at first you may get, I think usually the default is like 20 as your diameter and you may get something that looks like this. Um, so all you have to do is change that diameter. I'm gonna change it to one millimeter. And you see here that it was able to select everything and just uh, one click and drag. So it makes it a lot easier. Um, 
However, let's say, let me see, let me go with display mode as smooth here and type uh, square and then click OK. So here now we have, you know, this is perfect, exactly what we need. And if we click on finish form, uh, we're going to hit one of our walls here because there's an issue there. It's saying, hey, we can't convert this. So it wants to convert this to our, our solid body. Can't do it. So we're going to have to click on return. And the problem ends up being, I believe, is at this point here where you have sort of these intersection of these three bodies, it just can't solve that. That doesn't mean we have to quit here because I think there's another way around this. So I'm going to undo. I think if we just uh, make these in two different operations, it can work uh, by avoiding uh, it having to calculate these three intersections here. If you know of any other way, let me know. But this is the way I'm going to go about it. I'm going to go back again to create pipe. And I'm going to select just the outer um, portions here of the web first. Um, so unfortunately, I have to kind of click these one by one. If I did have, let's say I had these in separate sketches because I'm trying to avoid these lines here. Um, if I had them in separate sketches, I can just go ahead and drag and select. But because they're all in the same sketch, I'm just going to have to come in and select them one at a time. Uh, no big deal. We'll just go ahead and do that. And the, oh, if you accidentally select the wrong line, just click it again and it'll deselect it. So, okay, now that I have that, I'm gonna, again, display mode, I'm just gonna go with uh, circular, or, or what's it called, smooth. And an end type, I'm gonna go with square, click okay. And there we have it, and I'm gonna right click repeat pipe, and then I'm gonna go back and select all the lines here. And so basically, I'm just gonna do these as separate operations. And once I have them all selected, I'm going to come here, um, display smooth end types. Um, so here, look, that you can see that these are open. If I untoggle bodies here with my first one, see a little bit better. So if I bring that over uh, and convert, finish, and click finish form to convert it, these will actually come in as surfaces and not solid bodies. So I have to change the end types here from open to square. That'll close that up, click OK. Now I have you know, these two bodies here. And let's try that finish form again. And drum roll, yes, success. So it works, comes through. And you can see here that we've got all these different bodies. So let me untitle sketches here. Um, so our main body and then these separate bodies here. Uh, for our web and what I'm going to do here is now I can combine them so modify combine I'm going to select the uh, lines here first going out and then or make that my target body and then my tool bodies I'll select all the other um, intersecting pipe there and then click OK and make sure actually let me just go back make sure that um, your operation is joined and you have keep tools not checked Click OK, and you should see here that these three bodies all collapse into one. And there we have it. So now we have these two bodies. And what we can do now is take this and do a circular pattern. So create pattern, circular pattern. And our axes there, I'm just going to choose our Z. And uh, let's see, oh, bodies I haven't selected yet. Let's choose our object. And I'm going to create four of these and click OK. And you see I have four of them and they will match my spider bowl body perfectly. So you can see there that they perfectly wrap around this bowl, even though this is a sort of a complex curve there, right? It's not a perfect uh, sphere that I have here. All right, and now uh, that's basically it. And then I can further combine these into one body, modify, combine choose my main body here and then for my or choose that as my target body my tool body i can left click the first and then shift and then left click the last body that i want them to combine and operation is joined click ok and you'll see here that all these will combine into one body and there it is so that's how i approached the spider 
uh, web here. So hopefully you added a few more tools to your Fusion toolbox. The project to surface tool there came in handy there to take that flat plane and get it to project into a, uh, a complex curved surface. And the other thing is that pipe tool. So if you're trying to do a pipe in the solid workspace and it's not working, jump into that uh, create form here, your sculpting environment and try it there. Uh, you may get better results. All right, if you have any questions on my approach here, leave it in the comments below. And if there's an approach you would take that I didn't cover, uh, leave that in the comments as well. I'm curious to see what uh, path you would take. Also, make sure to check out the resources I have linked below. I've got a great Fusion 360 Constraints Cheat Sheet, which is uh, free to download. If you wanna get started with Fusion 360, take a look at my online courses and of course my live class that I do every week. I will see you all in a week or two.